Howdy, it's Kyle with the third round, the Sweet 16 of Geography March Madness 2021, a tournament to determine which of the U.S. or Canadian states or provinces is the overall best. If you were terrified by the lengths of the videos of the previous rounds and this is the first time we're checking this out, then welcome. If you want to see a bracket or print one off, you can go to geographyking.com to uh, see the bracket and uh, see what the rules are for the tournament. On the fly, I'm changing one of the rules. I wasn't going to go best four out of seven categories until the next round, but... Uh, with fewer places left in the tournament, I think it is more fair to go best four out of seven um, and without the videos going on forever with fewer places left. Um, and despite my attempt to come up with categories that wouldn't just benefit the larger places, the remaining places are kind of top heavy in terms of the seeds. Each of the five most populous U.S. states and each of the three most populous Canadian provinces are still alive uh, with only a couple of lower seeds. Cinderella type story still alive. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so the first uh, matchup of this round is California, the number one overall seed versus Tennessee. And they've each won two different rounds. So at this point, they've all won at least two rounds of the places that are left. So there really can't be any major upsets being that they've all won with at least six different categories. So um, so this is California where I'm from versus Tennessee where I live. Let's see, we'll start with number three. That's a tax category. It's not going to be good for California. Oh, no, that's household income. That is going to be good for California, but let's see what the numbers are. Really easy win for California here. It ranks eighth in the U.S. with a household income of $76,000 per year. Tennessee ranks 41st with a household income of $56,000, so um, pretty easy there. They go up one nothing over Tennessee. 42. 42 is state or provincial parks. Well, yeah, this will be another win for California here. Um, there's a large variety of state parks that, you know, high mountain stuff. Um, one's along the coast in the desert. Tennessee has some nice state parks too. I'm at one all the time, <laughs> but uh, they're just not going to compete with the overall uh, just variety of state parks. Not even just so much the number of them they have in California, just the, just the you know, again, the variety. And some of them are just pure wilderness. So uh, I got to go with California in that category. They go up 2 nothing. I do not want to see Tennessee get swept if they lose. 26 is public K to 12 schools. Well, here are some two wonderful performers in this category. We'll, we'll see which one of these is better. All right, so this is the win for Tennessee here. California ranks 40th in the country for its uh, public uh, K to 12 schools. Tennessee ranks 31st, so actually much better than I thought. Uh, Chattanooga is holding them back. If it weren't for Chattanooga, it might be ranked 21st. But, all right, so uh, two to one, California. Number 14 is livestock by 2019 revenue. This is certainly going to be California. Well, maybe not, though. Let me check. Okay, so California does win that category. Tennessee does have a few more hogs, but California has way more cattle. Um, these are just beef cattle. I'm not counting. This isn't dairy cattle. So uh, California does go up three to one. Can they finish off Tennessee with number 10? 10 is the largest company headquartered there. Well, yeah, this is going to be California. We'll get the actual numbers here. So this is Apple versus FedEx. And FedEx is a huge company, but Apple is just ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, California is going to win this category. They're going to win the round four to one. And I'm not sure if I'm going to disappear like that photo in Back to the Future. But either way, Tennessee, you out. Up next is Alaska versus Minnesota, and Alaska is the lowest remaining seed left. Can the Cinderella story keep going? Starting with number one. Number one is GDP growth rate. Well, this is going to be Minnesota, but let's get the numbers. So this is a win for Minnesota here. For GDP growth, I'm only going up through 2019. This is what everybody had, negative GDP growth in 2020. Um, Alaska's GDP is heavily dependent on the oil industry, and uh, gas has been pretty cheap the past couple of years, except for this past month or so. But um, So it's kind of been slow growing. Minnesota has been growing quite a bit for the past several years. Um, so they go up one nothing. Number 17 is tourism. Uh, let's see. So that's a win for Minnesota here. Minnesota actually lost with this category to Georgia in the previous round. So you can't win with the same category two rounds in a row, but you can win one after losing with it. Uh, so they go up 2 nothing over Alaska. 15 is dairy production. Well, this will certainly be Minnesota, but let's see by how much. 
Okay, really easy win for Minnesota here. They rank 7th in the U.S. in terms of dairy. Alaska is dead last. There's literally only one dairy farm in the entire state. So uh, Minnesota goes up 3 nothing. Uh, will Cinderella get swept away? Uh, we'll see. 62. The best single signature food. Well, we'll see how this one goes down. Okay, I'm taking Alaska here with Alaska king crab. I'm not sure exactly what you would consider the top signature dish from Minnesota, whether it's lefse or tater tot hot dish or whatever it is, I'm taking the king crab over Minnesota. Um, people from Oregon be like, what, you took those pastrami sandwiches over our crab? And now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a bad draw for Oregon in that category, but 55, can Alaska keep it going with obesity rate? Let's see. Minnesota is the 15th least obese state in the country. Alaska is the 8th most obese state in the country. So Minnesota wins this category. They win the round. Cinderella gets trampled by their own carriage. Hey, Alaska, you out? Up next is New York versus Hawaii. The glass slipper has been passed from Alaska to Hawaii. They're the lowest populated place still alive in the tournament. 37. Natural disasters by total damage since 2000. Let's see. This is a win for Hawaii here. They have been a decent number of natural disasters, the most significant one being the Mount Kilauea eruption in 2018. There were also some major floods that year as well. A few minor hits with hurricanes through the years. Um, but overall, New York had a lot more, a lot more flooding, winter storms, blizzards, ice storms, just a larger number of things that have caused a larger amount of damage. So... This is one category where it does help to be a smaller sized place because there's just less stuff, less area for things to occur. So Hawaii goes up one nothing. This is 27. This is uh, best for medical research. It's probably going to be New York. Let's get the actual numbers here. Yeah, big win for New York here. No surprise. A lot of major medical universities, but also a lot of other kind of medical tech stuff going on in New York City metro area. So just uh, way more stuff in New York uh, than Hawaii. Uh, so uh, New York ties it up one to one. See what the next category is. Seven. Seven is property tax. Well, this is an easy one because Hawaii has the lowest property tax in the entire country. Uh, New York has very high property tax. So, um, yeah, this is pretty opposite end of the spectrum kind of category here. Uh, so Hawaii wins this one really easily. Uh, they go up two to one. Seventy-three, the best nickname. Well, Hawaii is the Aloha State. New York is the Empire State. Um, New York lost to this one before in the earlier category. Um, yeah, Hawaii is going to win this one easily because you know Aloha State is very uh, iconic to Hawaii. Obviously, Empire State's all right, but it's not as good as uh, Aloha State. So your nickname, New York, has cost you two different categories here. So. Hawaii goes up three to one. I mean, Cinderella's not messing around this time. So Alaska got beat up pretty bad, but 47. 47 is the best third largest metro. So this is going to be uh, Rochester and uh, the island of Maui. So let's see who's going to win this one. Okay, I wanted to make sure it was, it was Maui and not the big island. And it is, in fact, Maui. So... I mean, you're not going to beat Maui in this one. So Rochester is not the nicest place in the world. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Cinderella just stomped all over New York here, winning at 4-1. to one. They win with categories 37, 7, 73, and 47. So Hawaii, 7 is your lucky number. New York, you out. Next up is Ontario versus Maryland. So Canada's most populous province. See if they can hold on and represent... 43% wilderness. I'm pretty sure Maryland lost this one before, but yeah, you're not going to beat Ontario or, uh, in this category. Some of the other provinces might, but certainly not Maryland. So really easy win for uh, Ontario in this category. They go at 1-0. 59 is the best for driving through on a road trip. Well, this is another one where being small is not going to help. So Maryland, being a small state, there isn't much to see. I mean, it would take you an hour to drive across the entire state. Ontario, just a lot of great stuff there. You can drive. I've done that drive from Detroit all the way to Niagara Falls a few times, up to Toronto, over to Ottawa. Just there's so much to see. You can go across the northern shore of Lake Superior 
it's a great road trip route. So really, really easy win for Ontario there. They go up 2 nothing. Sorry, I grabbed two there. <laughs> 36 NASA disasters by total number since 2000. So, yeah, let's see here. Okay, Maryland's going to win this one. They lost with this category to West Virginia in the first round, but uh, yeah, Ontario has a large number of disasters like New York, a lot of winter storms, blizzards, ice storms, even a heat wave. Uh, Maryland has had some floods and stuff, so a decent number, but this again, kind of like. Uh, New York, you have a larger space like Ontario. It's have more area for things to occur. So uh, Maryland gets back in at two to one. 46 is the best second largest metro. So to Ottawa, uh, let me check here. Since most of Maryland is part of the greater D.C. Baltimore metro area, after that, the largest metro is uh, the Ocean City Salisbury area where Wicomico County it doesn't really matter whether it's that one or Cumberland or whatever. It's going to be Ottawa. Really cool town. Uh, obviously, the nation's capital. Uh, very historic, cool architecture. So, you know, pretty easy win here for Ontario. So uh, they go up three to one. Canada's big boy looks to finish off Maryland with number 22. Total manufacturing output. Uh, let's see how this one goes. This is another category that Maryland had in the previous round, but they won it previously with a $24 billion annual manufacturing output. But Ontario has a $72 billion U.S. Uh, manufacturing output. So huge win there. It's tough draw for Maryland being the Ontario largest province and population. Toronto, the biggest city in the country. It's going to certainly uh, be an easy win for Ontario in that category. So they win that category. They win the round four to one. So Maryland, you out. Moving on to the other half of the bracket, maybe we can get some more competitive matchups, being that all four of the previous ones were four to one. It'll help make the video shorter. That's good. But yeah, it's been pretty bad for these losers. So Texas versus Washington starting off the other half of uh, the bracket here. 29. The best single site scenery. Well, Texas is prettier than a lot of people think, but it's certainly no Washington. Um, you can go with Olympic National Park, Mount Rainier, North Cascades. I mean, there's just so much in Washington that's going to be really beautiful. Texas, you would go with Big Bend or Guadalupe Mountains, but I have to go with Washington here. Uh, just a sheer amount of just wilderness and pure beauty. <clears throat> so they go up one nothing over Texas. Texas went down two to two to nothing in the previous round. Twenty one. <laughs> Total energy production. Well, I'm already going to check this one because Texas is by far number one energy producer in the country. Oil, natural gas. I mean, a lot of wind and solar as well. So Texas is certainly going to win this category um, easily over Washington, who's not even in the top 10. So uh, Texas ties it up one to one. Eight. Eight is job growth rate. These are two of the best states in the country for us. Let me check. Washington ranks seventh in the U.S. in terms of total job growth. Texas ranks fifth. So two of the best states in the country for this. But Texas does win the category. They go up two to one. 53. College graduation rate. Well, let's see what we got here. Texas is 30th in the U.S. in college graduation rate. Washington ranks 12th. So big win for Washington here. They tie it up 2-2. Finally, something competitive here. So... Um, 12. 12 is the tax give to take ratio. We'll see who wins this one. Okay, this is a win for Washington here. It's what's referred to as a donor state. It pays more in taxes than it receives. Uh, Texas takes in more money from the federal government than it pays in. So, um, yeah, big win for Washington here. They go up three to two. Will Texas be the first of the major seeds to go out? 58. The smallest county population. Well, this is going to be a really easy one for Texas because um, it has the least populated county in the country, which is Loving County. Actually, it might not be anymore, but it's still very, very low population. Let me get the actual numbers here. So Loving County is the least populous county in Texas with about 200 people. But there were 67 people in that county at the 2010 census, so it's been growing a lot in terms of percentage. Uh, the smallest county of Washington is uh, Garfield County with about 2,100 people. So uh, Texas wins this category. They tie it up 3-3. Three to three, Comes down to 
65. The, <laughs> the best overall music artists. Well, uh, I think Texas won with this one. Let me check. Okay, so Texas did win with that category previous round. Uh, so you can't win with your music twice, Texas, unless I draw the single music artist. That's a different category. Um, five, that'll be a tax category. Who's going to win this one? Five is income tax. I'm going to have to redraw because they both have 0%. Um, I think that's the first time I've drawn something where they tied. <laughs> so uh, they're tied three to three still in the categories, but um, they both have 0% income tax. Comes down to... 72. 72 is the state or province motto. So we're talking the Evergreen State or the Lone Star State. Well, okay, it wasn't until the editing process that I realized the mistake that I made here. It's supposed to be state motto and not state nickname, but mercifully, Texas still wins in this category anyway. Its state motto is simply friendship. Washington is by and by, so I'm going with Texas anyway in this category, so a big sigh of relief on my part for not completely screwing this up. But yeah, it doesn't change the outcome. Texas still wins. Yeah, you win this one 4-3, to three, so Washington. You out! Next up, it is British Columbia versus North Carolina. 22. Total manufacturing output. Let's see. Okay, big win for North Carolina here. It's fifth in the U.S. in terms of total manufacturing at about $103 billion per year. British Columbia does all right as well at $44 billion per year, but North Carolina is huge in terms of manufacturing, so they win that category. Uh, they go up one to nothing. Sixty-one. That's best for outdoors weekend trip. So um, this is definitely going to be easy for British Columbia. Okay, so BC has not won with that category, so I'm going to give it to them. Uh, just all the wonderful outdoors activities in the Canadian Rockies, uh, the coastal areas, Vancouver Island is almost all wilderness. I mean, most of the province is wilderness, so just a lot of great stuff for outdoors. Uh, but the reason why I'm glad I drew 61 is because a lot of folks have seen me pull this one. They're like, how do you know it's not 19? And that's because the way I draw my nines and sixes very differently, my nines look like lowercase q's, so... Uh, there's no way I'm going to mix up 61 and, and 19. <laughs> so um, uh, BC ties it up one to one. 59. There's my nine right there. 59. Best for driving through on a road trip. Well, uh, let me think about this. All right, this is a pretty tough call, but I'm going to go with North Carolina in this category. All that great wilderness and stuff in BC, but there aren't a lot of roads that connect it. So you have to take a ferry to get to the Vancouver Island. Um, so this North Carolina has a lot of great mountains, cities, the Outer Banks, the beaches. There's a lot of variety you can do by driving. Um, not as much. I mean, it's a wonderful drive across BC, no doubt. But I'm going to go with North Carolina. Uh, they go up two to one. 63. The best overall signature foods. Oh, let me think about this. Most of the signature food from British Columbia has been influenced by the large Japanese immigrant population. So a lot of BC rolls, which is kind of like a, it's a sushi, uh, Japanese style hot dogs, which includes nori seaweed and teriyaki sauce, as well as Dungeness crab and a lot of shrimp. For North Carolina, you have a lot of pork. So you have pulled pork shoulder, depending on the part of the state you're in, have different kinds of sauces. Uh, also calabash style seafood, which is uh, fried, of course, being from the south, uh, thick batter, as well as pimento cheese. So overall, I'm going to go with North Carolina. I'm just not a huge fan of Japanese-style food. I definitely don't want seaweed on my hot dogs. So I got to go with North Carolina in that category. Uh, they go up three to one. They look to finish off British Columbia with 47. 47 is the best third largest metro for each one. Let me see what these are. For BC, this is Kelowna, has about 100,000 people or so. Very outdoors oriented, very scenic, very tourism oriented. Um, for North Carolina, it's the Piedmont Triad, which is Greensboro, Winter Salem, and High Point, which is okay. It's significantly larger than Kelowna, but this category isn't about which one's larger. So I'm going to go with BC in this category, very scenic. Just kind of a nice town for uh, a weekend trip, you know, a good outdoors oriented stuff. Um, so I'm going to take BC in that category. They bring it up to 3 2. 18 is the next one. Housing cost to wage ratio. We'll see how this one goes. For North Carolina, the median house value is $180,000. 
and the household income was $54,000. For British Columbia, the average household income is $68,000 US, and the average housing value is $586,000. So really easy win for North Carolina here. Uh, the housing cost to wage ratio is really high in BC, much, much higher than North Carolina. So North Carolina wins this category. They win the round four to two. So hey, British Columbia, you out. All right, next up is Florida versus Quebec. See what we got for our first category here. 17, tourism. <laughs> yeah, this is not going to be a good one for Quebec. I mean, Florida is really high. Let me get the numbers here. Okay, so Florida obviously wins this category. Uh, 2019 tourism revenue was $112 billion U.S., which is pretty crazy. Uh, Quebec was surprisingly only $5.6 billion U.S. I thought it would be much higher than that. A lot of folks from Quebec go to Florida. I mean, unfortunately, probably not many folks from Florida go up to Quebec, but um, it's a great place to visit. Go up there, Florida. So Florida goes up one nothing. The good old number one GDP growth rate. Let's see who wins this one. This is another win for Florida. It has a year-over-year -year, uh, GDP growth rate of about 2.9%. Quebec is about 1%. So uh, Florida's economy is growing a little bit faster than Quebec. They go up two to nothing. Six. Six is sales tax. Well, this one doesn't usually go too well for the Canadian provinces. Let's check. Okay, another big win for Florida here. It's combined state and local sales tax is about 7%. It ranks 23rd in the U.S. Quebec, because all, all of Canada has a federal sales tax plus their state sales or provincial sales tax adds up to 15%. Even if it was just provincial, provincial is 10%. So either way, uh, Florida wins that one. They go up three to nothing. So Quebec, you do not want to get swept here. That's pretty embarrassing to get swept this far in. Nine, statewide province-wide uh, province crime rate. This will probably be Quebec, but let's get the actual numbers. The U.S. and Canada calculate crime rates differently, but no matter how you look at it, whether violent crime rate, property crime rate, total crime rate, whatever you look at, it, uh, Quebec is safer than Florida. Now, Florida is kind of one of the more dangerous states in terms of overall crime rate. Uh, Quebec is the safest uh, Canadian province in terms of overall crime rate. So uh, easy win for Quebec there. They don't get swept. Three to one. 52 is high school graduation rate. Let's see. Florida ranks 33rd in the U.S. with an 88% high school graduation rate. And I checked and double-checked this, and I couldn't believe it, but Quebec has an extremely low high school graduation rate of only 70%, which is the lowest in Canada. They do things a little bit differently with their school systems in Quebec compared to the rest of Canada or the U.S., but that's still really, really low. I, I couldn't believe it was that low. But no matter how you look at it, Florida wins this category. They win the series 4-1. to one. So Quebec, to a fini. And the last matchup of the Sweet 16 round is Pennsylvania versus Colorado. 67. Busiest airport. Haven't drawn that one in a while. I'm not sure what this one's going to be. Okay, big win for Colorado here. Denver is the fifth busiest airport in the country. Philadelphia is only 20th. Although, interesting enough, Denver is the largest airport in the country in terms of its overall size. But... Uh, so Colorado goes up one nothing. 21. Total energy production. Let's find out. Colorado ranks seventh in the U.S. in terms of energy production. It's huge in natural gas, but Pennsylvania ranks fourth in energy production. It's also huge in natural gas, but also coal. So uh, Pennsylvania wins that category. They tie it up one to one. 59. Uh, best for driving through on a road trip. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Colorado here. Just a much prettier drive. Um, Denver is a more fun city, I guess you could say, to visit than Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. Um, you know, just the high mountain ranges, the national parks. The, I mean, there's just so much more to see. Pennsylvania is a very pretty state. And I love the Ridge and Valley. You drive like this east and west across the state. Really nice. Uh, but overall, I do have to get to give it to Colorado just for the sheer scenery and and there's a point along Interstate 70, uh, you know, in, in the middle of the state where you're at 12,000 feet. It's the highest point of anywhere on the U.S. interstate. That's got nothing to do with this category, but just kind of an interesting piece of trivia there. So Colorado goes up two to one. Number three. Three is household income. Let's check. 
Pennsylvania ranks 22nd in the U.S. with a household income of about $62,000. Colorado ranks 12th in the U.S. with a popular or with a household income of about $72,000. So uh, Colorado wins that category. They go up three to one. Can Pennsylvania avoid going out like a chump with number five income tax? Uh, let's see how this one goes. Colorado has a flat 4.6% state income tax rate. Pennsylvania has a flat 3% state income tax rate. It's pretty low. Uh, so overall, Pennsylvania wins that category. They stay alive 3-2. to two. Can they march all the way back? 48. Best suburban county. Mm, let me think about this one. In terms of GDP per capita, household income, crime, school rankings, Douglas County, Colorado, which is in the southern end of the Denver metro area, outperforms any of the suburban counties of either Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. Uh, so I do have to go with Colorado in this category. It's also a very pretty county. It's very wooded and mountainous, and some of the parts aren't urban or suburban. So uh, Colorado wins this category. They win the whole round four to two. So, hey, Pennsylvania, you out? So that concludes the Sweet 16 round. We have seven states and one province moving on to the quarterfinals. I'll be posting that video on March 25th, and the winners of the quarterfinal matches are going to go on to a Final Four, which will be live-streamed on March 30th. So check out the video on the 25th. Hope to see you there.